everybody. I want to take you guys down and do a little yard walk. So let me get the camera turned around here. We'll go walk around the yard and kind of show you what's been changing. So here is our little tomato plant that used to be inside the grow tent. We just harvested off, I think, six tomatoes today. And we ate those on a... Just Paul and I were standing out here in the backyard and decided to snack on those. Here's the other tomato plant that was in the large grow tent. You can see there's another one that's about ready to be picked for a tomato. And so we've been eating on this in our salads. We've actually gotten quite a few off those lower tomatoes. And they're all starting to turn. And there's one that's, you know, turning down there. Let's see here. You can see there's a red one down there that's ready to go. This one here will be ready this week, hopefully. Especially being out here in the sun now. And then these are all Paula's hanging baskets. We hang around our property on our decks and out front of the house. Let's see, let's go over here. Oh, and then uh, we took out some bushes here, put in some hostas. So we may have to move these when the afternoon sun gets bright. This one I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to leave because by the time the really hot summer sun hits, that trellis there will be covered with green beans. So it'll create a nice shade block there for the hostas behind it. So I might move the rest of these hostas over there. Here's our climbing uh, rose bush. You can see it's really starting to take off. And then in these garden boxes over here, you can see the, the mint, or that's not mint. This is our sage that I propagated. You can see it's got some new growth here coming up. And here's a tomato plant. And this one here is a black cherry. I'll put the tag back there. And over here we have a pink boar. So I'm going to try these two out in these two new garden boxes this year with that ring of clover to give it nitrogen. Hopefully it's going to give us some really nice growth on these tomato plants in their first year beds. Over here we've got the first of our bamboo trellises. And this is where we'll be going to put in our cucumbers. And as you can see we've got our peas growing, but since we've had a really cold spring, our peas are barely getting going. And right now, next weekend is supposed to be the weekend I'm going to be planting for cucumbers. So I'm having a kind of a hard decision whether I'm just going to thin this out and then put my cucumbers in, which is probably what I'll end up doing. I'll take that cover off and then I'll just thin out a patch of some of the peas and put the cucumbers in there and put them onto the trellis. And then maybe they'll grow together and I might get a little bit of a pea harvest, but this year has been a really weak pea year. And then this one here, here's some peas in here and I need to... I'm probably just going to cut these out and then put the other national pickling. See, that's going to be the Punicura cucumber trellis there. This will be our national pickling cucumber trellis. And I'll end up putting some more soil in there along with some amendments like my green sand. I did add some green sand and some uh, Cascadia basalt rock in there to help break up that soil. And then I'll put some new stuff on top. But that's going to be for the other cucumber trellis. Last year we did beans here. We're going to do beans in other locations this year. So let's see. That's our Asian pear. It's already flowered. Just finished flowering, actually. Let's see. Let's go over this way. So we still have the apple blossoms on our Golden Delicious over here. Here's another couple of tomato plants I put in. These are the mystery tomatoes. I believe these are going to be the shorter variety. These are going to be like the Cosmonaut Volkovs. So they won't get too big. And I'm doing a little different placement this year, kind of on the sides. Instead of being closer to the middle, because I want to have a bean trellis there. And then I think I might actually put some herbs and stuff down in here. And grow, but right now I just got clover in there to give a lot of nitrogen boost to that soil. And help get some uh, root mass in there. Maybe I'll just leave this clover too, just to let that be a kind of a riparian area. For repairing that soil, so that way next year it'll be really rich and ready to go. And... If it gets, you know, nice enough, I might actually put some peas in here because the beans will be tall and I could actually do some fall peas if I ran a trellis between these two cages. Maybe put some fall peas in there. Always new ideas. Here's some of our wildflowers. I haven't flowered yet. You can see the heads are starting to, to come on there. And then over here in one of our bean hutches, we've got our uh, another tomato plant. And there's some peas back there. We'll end up putting our beans back in here. Probably wiping those peas out because we may, may end up just taking those and eating them as uh, pea shoots. And here's our golden delicious. The bees are feeding there. 
Always love to see the pollinators coming into our yard, just flying around everywhere. This is our dandelion patch. Some people think I'm crazy for having dandelions growing in my yard, but we like to pick the dandelions and uh, eat in the leaves. And then also, if you ever have those little, little tiny finch birds, they actually sit on the top of these heads and will eat these seeds. It's incredible. I was watching them do that this weekend. And uh, you'll also see the little pollinators coming flying in here, getting in there. So drawing in the pollinators is all I care about. Gives me a much higher yield. Looks like we got a little sweet potato coming up here. I didn't realize they had any of the sweet potatoes in that soil. So that'll be kind of nice. I'll get some sweet potatoes in this uh, box that I didn't plan on. There's another tomato. I didn't put any peas in this box because it was getting a lot of shade up through the spring. So I don't usually put peas in this one. So it's ready for the bean plants. But uh, another tomato ready for the bean hutch. Let's see. Oh, I potted the... Uh, the azaleas, those are the uh, purple azaleas that I uh, propagated last year. So they're all at the uh, one gallon stage this year. So that'll be a nice addition to our yard for our springtime flowers. All the garden boxes, you see I've got uh, weed fabric over the top. So I'm rotting down that previous year's material underneath here, I'm getting it warm. Because these, you can feel the difference what this does for the actual soil because it really warms up that soil. So that's going to help me get those roots nice and warm for when I transplant Mother's Day weekend. And then you may recognize these trays. These are all the trays that used to be inside the large grow tent. So I'll take these pepper plants and I'm going to plant them around the edges of these garden boxes. And then inside we're going to have the pepper plants that are on the deck back over here. And so I don't have the peppers there, I'll have the eggplants in the back row, peppers in the front, and then these smaller peppers around the edge. So that'll be a nice addition. And you see the wildflowers coming up over there. Blueberries are all blooming. All the current bushes, they're all bloom, you know, blooming with their buds. Let's see, I'll show you the current bushes. This is our red current. You can see the berries are already starting to form. Oh, and these things are so good. They're very tart. Man, they are good. You just grab one of these whole things, you just pull it off, just stick it in your mouth, pull off the berries. Oh, looks like I'm disturbing the little finchy birds. That's the little finch birds right there. They'll come down and sit on top of these daffodils. Or not daffodils. <laughs> no, I just forgot what these are called. The bird freaked me out. Uh, Dandelions. Look, they'll sit on the dandelions and they'll eat those. I guess I must be disturbing their uh, their evening feeding time. You can see there's a little yellow one on that pear tree. They're flying around. I love the little birds in this yard. As you can tell, I, I do have a lot of feeders. Got one there. Got one down there. I keep suet out year-round, so that way if the birds need that extra fatty, fatty food, they can have the... Uh, the suet up there, especially this time of the year when they're breeding their younger babies. Here's our roses. You can see they're all coming back nice and healthy. We've got our comfrey. Looks like it's about ready to start to bloom. You see all the heads on here. And this stuff, if you really want to attract bumblebees and hummingbirds, put comfrey in your yard. Because these little purple flowers, the bees just love, the, especially the bumblebees. We'll get hundreds of bumblebees in our yard drawn just to these bushes. So I have these everywhere in my yard. Over there, there, up there. And this year, remember you may have heard me mention in my videos before, I never have gotten any aronia berries off any of my bushes. So this is the fourth year I've had these plants in the ground. And look at that. I've got blooms all over the aronia berry bushes. And aronia berry is very high in antioxidants, and they're very expensive. So I'm hopefully going to see quite a bit coming in in the next year or two in these bushes, because I've got these bushes all over the yards, and they're all the same age. Some have grown a little taller than the others, and I've noticed that the ones that are bigger like this, they put on a lot of heads. So I'm really excited about getting that to harvest for our berries this year. As long as we can get them before the birds do, because, you know, 
it's always a battle with the birds but I always share with the birds too so I don't put netting over anything I just figure it's a battle between me getting out there before they do <laughs> All right. uh, let's see let's like take you up here strawberry patch is pretty thin this year not as not as big this year so I think it's gonna be a, a regrowth year because we had a really weird spring so hopefully I'll send out a lot of new runners and we can get that all filled in again but we should still get quite a harvest Here's the goji berry bush. Hasn't started to flower yet. There's another aronia berry. These are all the raspberries that I, I propagated. These are those shortcake raspberries. They only get to be about this tall and then they spread. So I'm gonna spread this whole area in here with raspberries. So you can see I'm getting pretty good, pretty good clumps of it going around in here. And so in the fall, I come through here and I trim it off and then I stick in various areas so hopefully I'll get a nice raspberry patch going in here. And I also have wildflowers in here, as well as I grow the mint. So it'll kind of be a nice mix. Here's a close-up of the uh, aronia berry flowers. There's another aronia berry bush there. Oh, I'm so glad I got some flowers on those. I was thinking I was never going to get flowers. Looks like my male... Uh, Seaberry bush is kind of dying off. I do have two other males in the property, though, so I'm not worried if that one ends up dying. Because I can always take a cutting from my other males, and then I can propagate another one and put it back there. But uh, that's a that's a seaberry bush, and there's also one down there on the other side of that goji. There's our maple. This is, I think, I believe this is about a 15-year-old Japanese maple. This used to be in our front yard, and we had our remodeling construction. I brought it back here. And it seems to really like it here, so I've got a. I did some trimming on it this winter and gave it a nice, nice open canopy underneath. And the birds seem to really love to hide underneath here, so it's kind of a nice little feature. There's our apricot. Haven't seen any apricots forming yet, but it did have quite a few flowers. The peach trees, these are not going to be peach trees after this year. I'm done with spraying. I am tired of having to spray these things fall and I sprayed them again this spring we had a late weird bump of warm weather and the thing started to blossom out and then it went dor dormant again and I think it sucked in the, uh, the fungus and so it's just got the fungal you know fungal peach leaf curl junk everywhere and I'm done I told Paula we're gonna we're gonna end up taking these cutting them off probably right about here and I'm gonna graft on this one's going to become a plum, and the one over here is going to become uh, nectarine. So we're going to we're going to eliminate these these bulging boobs. I mean, look at that; it's just disgusting. And then it gets in the peaches, and then it ruins the peaches. So uh, we're done. We're done playing with that. We're going to end up cutting these both off and grafting on. I'll probably cut this one right about here, so that way I'll still have a leader left on here for a branch in case. Uh, the graft doesn't take, then I can always cut it down a little lower, and then we'll re-graft. But uh, I think it'll be pretty successful getting that graft on there. I'll put two on there. I thought about taking off these limbs here and here, and then putting grafts on both these, but I think I'd rather just take it off the center, because I definitely don't want to cut this down, because that's a, that's a four-year-old uh, rootstock, and it's been in the ground here for three years, so that means I got three years of root growth in this. That that would be just stupid to cut that off flat and then put another tree here, because then you got to wait for all that growth to reoccur. When as I can just graft on a new piece of tree, and I've got that good healthy rootstock to just feed it, and it'll take off growing faster than it would be if I put a brand new tree in. All right, enough man, enough rambling from me. Got their other pear tree over here, and you got the other garden boxes with the uh, the other bean hutches. Going to be planted in another week or two. And of course I got these garden boxes all covered, heating up the beds, as well as breaking down that organic matter from last year inside. We got our, oh I can show you the figs. This will be our first, this is our first year getting figs. This is our uh, strawberry fig tree. So there you go, little figs. This is supposed to be a pink. A green outside with a pink inside center. So I'm pretty excited to get our first figs off this tree. 
or it's more of a bush, I guess you'd say, because it's only supposed to get to be, I think, six to ten feet, so it's not really a tree. Uh, looks like our Lee and Lang jujubes, they're starting to open up. Don't know what will ever happen with those. You can see all the flowers on our uh, blueberries. Here's our red goomies. Lots of flowers on these, so we should get some nice goomies on here. Put these tomatoes in last yesterday. And we don't know what those are, so we're doing the mixed variety of tomato just to throw them wherever they go, just to see what we get. A little bit of a surprise. Here's another aronia berry. Some more raspberries. Another aronia berry. There's some more tomatoes in the box. And these are all, I believe, going to be the uh, Montesino F1s and the uh, Supernova, which are both a grape tomato. So hopefully that'll be those. But with the mix, we don't know. <laughs> Here's our other apple. The neighbors probably think I'm crazy out here filming my yard. That's kind of it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the video walk. And I'll try to get another one of these maybe in another couple weeks to show you when the, uh, the fruit starts to produce and the, uh, the gardens have something on them for you guys to look at. Then I'll probably do the lower yard videos because they're, they're a little easier and they don't take so long. But uh, you guys might get bored watching this stuff, me walking around, just kind of hearing me talk to myself. All right, this has been Brian from PMB Homestead. Hope you guys enjoyed the little tour of our backyard here, and I'll uh, I'll talk to you again. Bye.